but you guys got an old pc here that needs a bit of tlc it's an old uh pc that's been lying around on the floor and i say old but it's still got pretty nice parts in it it's got a asus tough gaming x570 uh, plus wi-fi uh motherboard into here which is pretty good it's got some corsair platinum ram in here and you can see it's full of dust it's just been lying around it's had some parts robbed out of it so i thought i would uh show it some love and uh, rebuild it and then probably give it away to someone who could use it rather than having it lying around on the floor doing nothing so i've got some bits lying around here so i'm going to put these to use and try to get a pc built out of these parts and uh basically make it look a bit more presentable because it's a waste of hardware it's just lying around here and some of this stuff is still very usable so i want to uh utilize some of these parts now I could probably still use this cooler it's a very good cooler but i'll probably use this in something else another project it's been uh, on here for a while so i wanted to check the compound anyway so i'm going to remove it and i do have a all-in-one closed loop wall cord system from arctic which is a 360 millimeter rad so I want to use that and I also have a larger case which I want to put all that stuff into. So maybe we can utilize some of these bits and put some new bits into uh, this uh, older system here. It's not quite old because it's got an Asus Tough Gaming X570, but you know what I mean. So let's get this off here. I'm just going to remove this cooler. Try not to pull up here because I see so many people do this. They just yank it up and then all of a sudden the uh, CPU comes flying out of the socket and you can damage it. So you can see quite a beefy cooler. This is a very, very good cooler indeed. Um, I think this is the Fuma 2, I think it was. It's a very good cooler, keeps your CPU nice and cool. I have did a review on this and uh, also did a build of it. You can see the dust build up on them fans is pretty bad. So that needs a good clean and, and uh, we can use that again and reutilize it. So I'm, what I'm going to do is remove these cables from the board, make sure the screws are removed, and I'll remove that bracket as well so we can put that with the cooler so we can use that again in another build or maybe use it on an older build or something like that. So let's get this out. I don't like to waste hardware because it's very expensive nowadays and not everyone can afford um, hardware like this. So want to utilize it and make sure that we uh, just don't leave it on a shelf somewhere like some of those big youtube channels where they have hordes of hardware and they just literally just leave it in the backdrop to make uh, their viewers you know die with envy you know i'm not that sort of person but hey who am i to judge but let's remove the uh, bracket from the motherboard here and uh, we'll get this uh, removed and put aside and then we can remove the motherboard now, if you're wondering how that dust buildup gets inside of these cases, a lot of this is due to the fact that uh, PCs that sit on floors, they will normally suck in a lot more dust. Again, there's more fans than ever in today's PC builds. So more fans means more intake, more dust. If you've got mesh fronted cases, they generally will cause a lot of dust buildup as well. And, uh, you know, I always get asked the question, which is the best way to clean out a PC? And to be honest, I know there's a lot of videos on YouTube for entertainment value on deep cleaning PCs. But personally, uh, these are cherry picked PCs uh, where they've just got a bit of dust in them. But if you've got a heavily bad PC, and I've seen some bad PCs in my time where someone's been smoking in the house and they've got dust in there and it's just literally stuck to all the dust and it's horrible. And you won't want to be cleaning that, I can tell you. So let me just uh, explain the way I do it. I will just basically take the PC outside and use a blower and blow out all of that dust. It's a bit pointless deep cleaning a PC because it's not going to take long to get dusty again, especially if that person has let that PC get that dusty in the first place. Anyway, we're getting sidetracked here. So we've removed the uh, motherboard from the case. And this is the motherboard here. It needs a bit of a clean. I'll just blow this out once it's done and I'll remove that compound here. We will probably need that back plate, so I'll keep that, and uh, we can discard the rest. So we've now got the motherboard out, and you can see that little fan down there. I can just give this a little blowout with a bit of air. Probably wouldn't use a blower on this one, just a little compressed air or something along those lines, and a little bit of a dust down, and you should be good to go. So this motherboard is a tough gaming motherboard. It's pretty decent, and it also has a 3800X in here, so it's going to be pretty good for someone to do whatever they like with this PC, gaming or video editing. 
I'm going to use isopropanol alcohol to clean off that CPU because it does have a lot of buildup on here. And you could just use whatever you like to clean yours, a little pad like this, uh, clean it up, spray some stuff on there, and away you go. And uh, you can see the compound coming off there. I'm just going to fold this over and give it a good clean. And these are lint free uh, pads. You can use these wherever you want, really. You don't want that sort of lint sticking to bits. I'm trying to just clear around the uh, CPU a little bit here. Now, it's better to clean it while it's in the socket because that way you don't catch the pins or anything like that. So just leave it in the socket. You don't need to remove it to clean it. It's probably going to be easier to do it this way. So, anyway, I'm going to clean this off and then just tidy up this board a bit. And then we can put in our NVMe drive. So that is the compound all cleaned off. And uh, what I'm going to do here now is put in our M.2 uh, SSD drive. And uh, this one does come with a heat cooler here, which I could use in this position here. But I'm going to use the one down here. They're both um, Gen 4, so it doesn't really matter which one I use. And I prefer to use the one with the cooler that they've got because it's a better quality cooler on the board. And I'm not sure why they didn't put the cooler um, on the top one and leave the bottom one clear. I'm not sure why they did it in reverse. Maybe because it might um, impede on the GPU or something like that. So this does have a, a thermal pad on the bottom here, which will be useful for keeping the actual NVMe drive uh, cool. And you can see it does come with a, an actual cooler itself on the NVMe drive, but it's only a thin little pad compared to this one. So I think this one's going to be better than using the stock uh, one that come with it. So I'm just going to be using this one here. Now there's the standoff is missing here. So I will need to dig out a standoff for these. That's why it's important to keep all your parts. Now the NVMe drive we're going to be using is the XPG Gaming S70 Blade. This is a one terabyte NVMe drive. It's Gen 4. And this is one of the fastest uh, NVMe drives you can get that's Gen 4 on the market. This is pretty much close to its maximum capacity, which you can get on the M.2 uh, Gen 4 slot. It's over 7,000 reads and writes. That's so pretty decent. So I'm going to put a standoff on here and uh, screw this in. Make sure you get it in the right area here. And then we can just slot in the drive itself like so. And then I can then screw this down. So it's always handy to keep the all parts in the motherboard box, which the motherboard come in. And that way you can always find uh, spares and parts that you need for that particular board or whatever hardware you're using. So we've got this screwed down now. All I need to do is remove the sticker. Now I'm not going to use this one here uh, because it is a bit flimsy. I'm going to be using this much more beefier one here and remove the backing uh, sticker here. Just make sure you remove that and then it will stick down onto the actual drive and then we can screw it down onto it. So there we go. Let's get this done. Let's just line this up so we can screw it down. And these can be a bit fiddly sometimes to line up, especially if you've got a tripod in the way and that's not straight bright, get it straight. There we go. That's done. So now once we've got it lined up with the screw holes, just gonna tighten these two screws down and that part is done. I do love these M.2 NVMe drives. They make the installation so much more cleaner and so much more better. It's on the board, it's out the way, no cables, no messing around. And uh, I think as time comes, we will see a lot more of these on the board. You can see there's two of them on here and they're both Gen 4. So that means I can get a larger drive as storage if I wanted to in that other one there. And uh, that should be pretty much for most people unless you are a hardcore user and you need masses of storage then obviously nvme drives are a little bit away from there at the moment because of the cost they can be pretty expensive when you go further up the food chain with the higher end stuff so this gen 4 stuff is pretty expensive once you go above the uh, one terabyte i mean this one terabyte is round about this particular drive is 179 pounds which is pretty pricey uh, but i've got it in a flash deal so let's move on to installing the RAM. I'm going to reuse this RAM. It's a Dominator Platinum RAM. It's very, very good. Very high profile RAM. But the RGB on here looks pretty nice. So I'm going to slot these in. And I've got four of these. Now, if RGB isn't your thing, I can understand a lot of people don't like RGB. But RGB is here to stay. And if you don't like RGB, then don't use it. It's pretty simple. You can still build PCs without RGB. 
Now, I think there's 64 gigs of Dominator Platinum RAM, so it's 3600 speeds. So it's still pretty decent RAM in 2021, so that'll be okay for this PC still. So I'll just use uh, four of these inside here. And the effects on it is quite nice once you use the software. And uh, we'll just get this all installed onto the PC. Now I'll give the board a bit of a clean up at the end. I will give it a blowout at the end once it's all done. So all that dust will be removed. I'm not too worried about that. Okay, so let's move on to the actual cooler now. So we've got the cooler which we're going to use is the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360mm uh, RGB uh, multi-compatible all-in-one CPU cooler, which is a water-cooled unit. It's uh, compatible with all your usual motherboards for your RGB. Now, this does have a six-year warranty on this one. It's pretty hefty cooler, uh, probably a bit overkill for what this little system is, but we're going to use it anyway. Now, it comes pre-mounted with the fans here, as you can see on here. Now, this is the RGB version. They do an addressable RGB version. But you can see it's got this braiding down on the pipe here. Now, thing to note here is the fan cable does go down the piping, down the tubing inside here, underneath that webbing. So you just have to bear that in mind. There's a little fan on here, and there is a little sticker on the bottom we need to remove here. The pump is pretty unique to Arctic, and uh, it's an easy mounting system on here. So I'm going to remove this sticker here. So we can see that copper plate here, quite a big thick copper plate on the bottom. And uh, there's a couple of simple brackets that we need to screw down onto this uh, pump, which go on the outside here for the AMD system. And uh, Intel will be slightly different, but with the AMD system, I can use the stock back plate. I don't need to use the back plate that comes with uh, this unit. If you've got an Intel one, you will need to use that. It's got the PWM uh, power connector here and also your RGB connector here, which goes in. That's the four pin version, not the three pin, because the three pin is the addressable RGB. The rad is pretty thick, as you can see, very well built, and it is 398 millimeters long. So bear that in mind. You can see the cable management down here is very nice and tidy. So if you have the room up the top to put this uh, radiator in as is, it's as simple as just quickly installing this up the top of your case. If you're looking to put this in the front, you will need to change the location of this because obviously the RGB fans are going to be inside the case and it will be blowing air out the front. So you would have to change the rotation of these fans, which can be a bit of a faff. But other than that, uh, it's all there and we've got all the components inside the box here. This is our mounting screws and also our bracket and everything else now back plate we won't need some of this stuff this stuff is for intel and also for amd and the installation on these is pretty easy um this is the back plate for the intel you can see these holes here will just mount onto the back plate here and you can use the little washer kit that come in here and you can screw down your uh, mounting system if i've got an in intel one in i may do another one of these uh, but this is the AMD backplate, which is what we're going to be using. And uh, it's a really simple insulation process. So basically, this is the actual pump here. We need to screw on the bracket system. And this is the brackets here that we're going to be using. There's two of them here, and they just screw in with one screw on each side. So just hold this into position. And then all we need to do is screw it down. That simple. Screws all come in a kit, so just use those and screw it into the actual pump itself. Now, I had plans to put this radiator up the top of the case, but unfortunately, the case manufacturer decided that they didn't want to give me the information about the length of radiator that it supports. It just said 360 millimeter, and they sent it out, and of course, it didn't fit. So then I had to use plan B, which was put it at the front, which meant a lot more work involved to uh, convert that to putting it into the front of the case. Unfortunately, my mistake, I forgot to push the record button. It was getting late at night. It was around about 10 o'clock at night. And I was trying to uh, get this installed ready for uh, today's video. And of course, again, it was uh, forgot to push the record button. So I didn't show the installation process of the radiator, unfortunately. 
but I did show the installation of the pump so I'm going to go ahead and show you that right now pretty straightforward process I've now got the bracket on and what I need to do is got the back plate on the motherboard and I'm just going to put these little uh, sort of plastic washer standoffs here onto the board and then what I need to do is screw in the actual bracket to the board there's a bracket that comes in the kit as well that needs to be screwed now you need to read the instructions careful here because the way Arctic have got their mounting system is they have do two different screws they because of the way the cooling is done on Ryzen you have one on the outer holes and one on the inner holes and you need to make sure that you use them in the right orientation and it does tell you that on their website there's a really good installation guide on their website anyway so let's line up this uh, bracket here and get it screwed into the back plate here and there's two of these we need to do we can get the screw sequence correct here otherwise it won't cool the cpu down as sufficiently as it's designed to there's a little bit of an offset there and you can read the instructions on their website very simple and easy to follow okay we've got both of these in now i'm going to add a bit of compound that does come in the kit as well which was good i think this one was the mx5 and uh, they make some really good uh, compound arctic so if you haven't checked out their compound then please do they've got some really good compound i'll leave the links in the video description anyway now you can use whatever method to apply your compound and how much you like and what method you want to apply it is entirely up to you pretty sure there'll be some sort of discussion in the comment section I'm going to use the spread method here. I'm going to put a glove on, latex glove, and spread it out nice and evenly. And the good way about this is, is it just takes off any surplus and sticks to the glove. So it just puts just the right amount onto the actual CPU here and just get a good bit of coverage. There we go. You've got to love the internet for its critiquing. They just love to do it on the internet and uh, it never gets old. So let's take a look at the pump here. What I need to do here is line the pump up. There's four risen screws here which we can drop the pump onto and we can use the thumb screws to tighten this down so that's as simple as that it's a very easy mechanism very easy to set up and i'm just gonna find these screw holes here and it's a bit difficult to see here because it's getting pretty late in the night time and i've only got one light on uh here so getting pretty tight to see these uh, screw holes and i haven't got the best eyesight anymore so let's get this lined up and uh, I'm going to get the thumb screws in and tighten this down. It's that simple. I'm just going to pull these cables out of the way. There we go. So like I said, it's just a simple case of screwing down the thumb screws onto the actual pump here. And there's four of them on here. So I'm just going to do these lightly, get them all on, and then tighten them down with a screwdriver alternately. So let's go ahead and get these all lined up. And we can then tighten these down. Now you don't want to over tighten these you should hear just a little click on here when you're tightening these down and that normally means you've reached the point where you want to stop screwing if you're really forcing this down it's not going to be good for you so don't over tighten these some people do over tighten this and cause problems later on down the line so just lightly uh, screw this on just going to get this in here and give this a tighten down there we go you can see here just going to tighten down one corner and then move to the opposite corner and then tighten it down there as well now you don't need to go all the way down on the first one and then go to the next one you really want to sort of take it easy and work your way around and that way you're not tightening down one side more than the other too quickly that's the way i like to do it I just take my time here and move around to the next one so let's put the io shield into the new case and i'm just going to pop this in here and click it into position now whether you want to put the pump onto the uh, the actual motherboard itself first or if you want to put the radiator in and then put the pump on when it's inside the case that's entirely up to you i'm just going to put this into here now you can see the position i've got this in at the moment this will be the ideal position to have the radiator mounted up the top and that was for my previous video where i was making a video about pc builder mistakes so that is why you're seeing it in this position this case doesn't support this particular radiator at the top and that is why you are seeing it there so i had to change the fans around and quickly put this in the front for this video which unfortunately i forgot to push the record button and uh, that is why you're seeing this bit of footage i put this bit of footage in there just as a bit of a filler but generally 
it was going in the front on this one because the case doesn't fit a 398 millimeter long radiator it gets caught on the actual uh, plastic shroud on the uh, motherboard here so you can see i've got the three fans on the outside of the case here i need to remove that bottom fan so i can reroute that cable there because it's stuck on the outside but it's okay it's all in i can do that off camera but basically that's how i've mounted this radiator and i've got the radiator on the inside of the case and the fans on the outside here and the cover goes on the outside so it sits in there now i can't have the piping down the bottom there was a comment i see saying you should never put that at the bottom they should be at the top unfortunately i've always put these down at the bottom but because of the basement on the uh, power supply there i can't have these tubes down the bottom they just get caught and it's all to do about uh, the circulation of water i didn't want any air bubbles and stuff like that but this should be okay because it's above the pump and i think that'll be okay it's going to have to be okay because there's nowhere else to put it so that's where it's going to have to live other than that it's in there okay now the problem i run into as well with these fans being mounted uh down the tube in here it was a little bit more difficult to mount uh, the fans on the front of the case now the fans on this uh, cooler are mounted with the cable going down the tube in here and again i don't like that design i wish they would change that so you could just put the fans on yourself and that way it makes it a lot more easier for installation that's just my personal opinion other than that it's a really nice cooler and it fits in there lovely i'm just going to put two of these uh, fans which i took off the front and put them on the top so it gives it a bit more rgb on the top and this will give it good airflow as well by uh, extracting air out the top because heat rises and it will basically um, go out the top of the case as well so we'll have intake on the front and we will have uh, extraction on the top and at the back of the rear of the case so all i need to do here now is put in the power supply and again i'm just going to put this in and quickly screw this down and we can then put the graphics card in and we should be getting close to the end here there is room for a couple of uh, storage devices there which could be either ssds or three and a half inch drive bays and you can see there's another two areas for um, ssds on there as well which is very nice plus we've got that m.2 slots on the board which we can utilize as well so plenty of room for storage in this case it's quite a big case i'm going to go ahead and get this mounted up and then we'll get it screwed in and this is just the standard four screws held in here so i'm just going to quickly screw these in now i got a question the other day about why do i use a hand screwdriver and not electric one all the time and the reason why is because i just prefer the feel of a screwdriver over electric screwdriver i do use electric screwdriver for fans and things like that because they're thicker screws but and sometimes i will use electric screwdriver depending on uh, the sort of work i'm doing so it just depends really but overall i don't tend to use it for the whole the whole build process like motherboard screws and things like that i tend to use a hand screwdriver so we're getting there now all we need to do now is get that graphics card in i've got a 1660 super which i'm going to drop in here and uh, we can then tidy it up a little bit give it a blowout with uh, the blower and we should be pretty much good to go from here now the graphics card is a 1660 super it's a little bit on the small side for this but it should be okay for what we got going on here i'm pretty sure that someone's gonna be okay with it especially in today's market it's very difficult to find graphics cards and i've only just purchased two graphics cards which cost me an absolute fortune uh, a 3070 for a build i done not long ago and also uh, a 6700 XT for a build I did as well. And those cards were pretty expensive. So I didn't plan on spending loads of money on this particular build. I'm using parts that I got available. So there we have the graphics card in here now. So let's take a look at the finished result. I'll get the side panels on and we can take a look at the end results. Now it does need a bit of a clean still, so it's not the finished product, but it should be okay to show you guys what it looks like. I think someone's gonna be pretty stoked when they get this uh, machine it's a pretty decent machine and they can build on this one they can literally add in a bigger card at a later date when they're more affordable and again they can tweak the colors to whatever they want here so a pretty nice machine overall and i'm pretty happy the way it's turned out uh, considering the parts that we had available and i'm pretty sure that whoever gets it is going to be stoked and have many many hours of fun playing games on this system now another concern for people was the charcoon power supply that i used here this is a 550 watt gold certified power supply is a pretty decent power supply 
uh, I think it's a pretty good choice for this particular build. I had a bunch of them lying around, so I'm not sure uh, why you're concerned about something like that. I don't normally use Sharkoon, but I bought a bunch of them because they were £20 a pop, and that's the reason why I'm using it in this build. I'm trying to keep the costs to a minimum. But overall, I do think the overall finish is pretty good. And you've got to remember what it looked like when we first started. It was lying around on the floor, doing nothing, gathering dust, and we've given it a new lease of life. So whoever gets it, I'm pretty sure is going to be pretty happy. And yes, I know there's many different things I could have done different with this build, but I was trying to keep uh, it to a bare minimum because I didn't want to spend vast amounts of money on something. So I was using the bits that I had to hand. So it turned out pretty well, in my personal opinion. Anyway, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Hope you enjoyed the video. I just want to say a big shout out to all my YouTube members who have joined my YouTube members group. Your names are rolling up on the screen right now. Thank you very much for your support. And I shall see you again for another video real soon. Bye for now.